First question uh, will go to uh, Mark Spears. Go ahead, Mark. Are you on with us, Mark? All right, well, first question will go to Dwayne Rankin. Go ahead, Dwayne. Thank you, sir, appreciate it. Uh, Cole, uh, just wanted just to ask, um, what, what teams have you, have, you, have you had individual workouts for? Um, I had a few uh, individual workouts. For, I had an individual workout for Washington, Miami, and Orlando. Okay. And just when you were in those moments uh, with Washington, Miami, and Orlando, was it, was it nerves? I mean, you've been around the game for so long. I wouldn't think there would be, but I'm just curious, what was the mindset going into the workouts? Um, well, the, the mindset I had, I mean, I think personally the workouts I had, I thought the Washington and Orlando ones went really, really well, in my opinion. Just, that's just how I felt. And then the Miami Heat one, I think it went uh, well, not as good as the other two, but it went well. And so just like, um, and I find, found myself when I had the two that went really, really well, I felt that I was just very calm, just like kind of in a Zen, a Zen mode, just really just focused, just in, and at the end of the day, just really having fun with it, just because I love basketball. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Next question goes to Ian Begley. Go ahead, Ian. Cole, thank you for doing this. Uh, do you have any other workouts scheduled between now and the draft, or you think that's it for you? Um, I don't currently know. Something could come up, but as of right now, I have nothing uh, planned going forward. Did you have any uh, Zoom conversations with uh, the Knicks or the Nets? I asked that just because we're local. We cover both teams. No, I did not. Thank you. Uh, next question, go to Josh Robbins. Josh. So that, uh, Cole, for those of uh, fans who are not familiar with your game, what are some of the best qualities you will bring to the NBA level and what are some of the areas that you want to improve? Um, well, I think I'm a very, very good scorer, not just scorer. I think I'm a very good defender and a very good passer. I just, I really didn't get to fully showcase that, that, that much this year at UNC. I was just honestly a shadow of myself just playing this year. I really wasn't that healthy. I probably played six games healthy, but, um, yeah, no, nah, I just, I have, uh, I think I bring a lot to the table, especially with an NBA spacing. I think I, I really can add a lot to a team just right now. Thank you. We'll go next to Will Guillory. Go ahead, Will. Will, are you there? No. Oh. Okay. Let's see what else we got along here. Go next to Matt Evans. Go ahead, Matt. Matt, are you there? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, sorry. Um, with both the financial and developmental incentives that the new G League Select team offers, do you see it as being an attractive route for prospects to reach the NBA? Um, personally, I, I'm a little unsure about that route just because the, the thing with that G League is those dudes are good. Those dudes are also hungry. Those are, those are grown men. Those are grown men in that league. Just I think it's – especially for some of these dudes coming in who aren't like just – I mean, you – I end of the day you a young kid like I, I don't know if everyone fully knows what they're stepping into I wish everyone who goes that route nothing but the, but the best of luck with that I don't see that route being the ideal route for a lot of people I think it's just it's certain people can, are going to be able to do it and certain people are not it's not for everybody okay thank you thanks we'll go next to Stefan Bondi go ahead Stefan hey Cole how's it going man Doing well and yourself all right man thanks um you obviously coming out of high school in Queens, like you were supposed to be one of the top rated um, draft picks coming out of high school. And, and then you mentioned it, things didn't go like you planned at UNC. Can you just tell us what happened? And is it frustrating? Do you feel like you have something to prove here? Yeah, I mean, it, it frustrates me every single day. Every single day since the season ended during the season, it was just, it was super frustrating, especially just not being able to be healthy and be out there. That was even more frustrating, but um. Yeah, no, nah, I just, I just got to just come into this with a chip on my shoulder. Obviously, I'm not where I'm in the ideal position, but all my dreams and all my, my goals are still ahead of me. I still can accomplish 
every single thing I want to accomplish. So I'm just, I'm blessed enough to have that going for me. So I'm just, I'm happy about that. And do you view yourself more of an on the ball lead guard in the NBA or um, do you think you're going to be playing off the ball? Um, I think you got to be able to do both. I think that's just the reality of it. I think because a lot of the new approach to a lot of teams is these two guard fronts. You, you see it. I mean, you've seen it with Golden State. The Rockets did it this past year. Just and at the end of the day, those are the, those are what the best teams are getting. I mean, even LeBron had Rondo. Just the, the best teams are going to have two ball fronts. I mean, two guard fronts. So you got to be able to do both. And I think I, I can do. I think I excel at both. Thanks, man. Uh, Mark Spears, are you on the line? Yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, Cole, for, what are your fondest memories of your father's career? And also what pressures come with being a uh, son of a former NBA player? Um, I personally didn't get to watch him play. I mean, he, he retired when I was before I was, I think, before I turned two. So I don't really have any memory of him playing. Okay. So, I mean, that's one. And then, um, what was the second part of the question? I'm sorry. Uh, well, maybe to fix one, is there any highlights that you've seen that you, you really enjoyed about your father? And also, did, was there pressures that came with his name? Um, let's see, highlights. I mean, he showed me a, a, a few clips a couple of years back. I think it was him catching this little two-hand, like, pump dunk in a game. I think it was in college. And so that was pretty sweet. I had to give him a little credit on that. So I gave him – that was probably – that's probably my favorite clip I've seen of him. And then – um. In terms of pressure, I mean, no, nah, only only real pressure I get is the pressure I put on myself. I mean, and I do I, I do put an immense amount of pressure on myself, but at the end of the day, I, it's it's all self inflicted, so I just it's something I live with every single day. Thanks. We'll go uh, go ahead to Matt George. Go ahead, Matt. Hi, Cole. Thanks for doing this. Uh, Matt George from KHDK Radio in Sacramento. Have you had any contact at all with the Sacramento Kings, and how do you see yourself potentially uh, fitting in with that roster with what they're trying to do? Um, I've had no contact with them, but, I mean, if I were to be drafted there, I mean, I, I mean, just another guard who come in and shoot, score, pass, win. And so I think I, 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 I honestly compliment anyone I play with. Next question goes to Sam Ferris. Hey, Cole, thanks for taking the time today. Two-part question. As you're well aware, with the long layoff, do you feel completely healthy now? And where do you think your game has expanded the most over this kind of extended layoff? Oh, yeah, I mean, shoot, this is, this is the best I've felt since pre-surgery. So, I mean, I feel really, really good just – it's it's, 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 this time has really just been a blessing just to get back to full health, just to really polish uh, the mind, polish my game. And just in terms of like where I think I've made the biggest changes so in terms of decision-making, just that's obviously where I, I probably struggled most this year. And just so, I mean, just at the end of the day, everything that I struggled with this year relates back to decision-making. So I think that's the biggest thing. And I think you'll see a, a big change at the next level. Awesome. Thanks, Cole. Thank you. Uh, next question goes to Will Guillory. Go ahead, Will. What's up, Cole? This is Will Guillory from The Athletic. Uh, first off, have you had any contact with the Pelicans at all during this process? And, and more in general, uh, have you ever thought about maybe that it was maybe the decision to come back from the knee surgery was something you shouldn't have done? Or do you think that was the right decision coming back at North Carolina? How much did it hinder you once you did come back? Um, yeah, I have. I had a Zoom call with the Pelicans, so I have been in contact with them. Um, and then just coming up from a knee surgery, I mean, shoot, did it probably hurt my draft stock? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the, that's the reality of the situation. But do I regret it? No. I'm glad I got to play with my teammates at UNC. Glad I got to play for Coach Williams and the whole coaching staff. I just – that making that go, making that decision to go to Carolina is a decision I will never regret. And just so I'm really happy that I was able to come back and play more than that six or nine games I played prior. So I'm just, I, I, I don't regret the decision at all. Thank you. We'll go to Keith Pompey. Go ahead, Keith. Hey, how you doing, Cole? Uh, um, did, did you have any discussions with the 76ers? And if so, how did they go? Yes, I had a good Zoom call with the 76ers recently. So that was, that was, that was, that was good. That was, that was really good. Now, you know, the Sixers coached by Doc, he was your father's teammate, I think, for a little bit more than two years with the Knicks. What would it be like to be coached by one of your father's former teammates? Well, I mean, shoot, forget him being one of my father's former teammates. That's a great coach right there. So just being 
post by someone like Doc Rivers, who is an NBA champion, I believe, um, just is uh, – that'd be legendary right there. It's just it's, you can't ask for much more than that. How do you, Last question, how do you think you would fit in with the Sixers? I think I would fit in uh, really well with them, just playing just with Ben Simmons, just being another guard who could rebound, who could also shoot, create his own shot, but then not only just create his own shot, create for others, just whether it's hitting Ben in transition, I know he loves to run, or just um, – in the pick roll situation with Joel. So, I mean, just, I, I really think we'll be a good fit there. Thanks, man. Yep. Thanks, Keith. Uh, we'll go ahead to Justin Quinn. Go ahead, Justin. Hi, Cole. Have you had any chance to speak with the Boston Celtics? Um, yes, I did do a Zoom call with the Boston Celtics. Could you tell us how that went? Uh, I, I think it went well. I think it did. It went very well. And um, if you were drafted by them, could you maybe just briefly comment on how you would see yourself taking on probably a pretty large responsibility with what they have on their plate this season? Um, yeah, no, I mean, I just like that, that'd be stepping onto a, a, a team that could have very easily made the finals this year, like very easily, just was a game away from making it there and could have been a contender. So just stepping into a team like that and potentially having a role that would, that would be awesome just because I know they're super talented, they're young. I mean, obviously, Kemba's there right now. Just being able to play with someone like that and to learn from that would be awesome and just a blessing. So that would be pretty cool. Thanks, Cole. Yep. Let's go to Jonathan Kiernan. Hi, Cole. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, Jonathan Kiernan of NBA Collips. Uh, on your journey to the NBA over the past couple of years, have you been in contact with any NBA players that have assisted your development? And if so, have they given you any uh, advice that has been very helpful? Obviously, there's been number of players like Harrison Barnes, Reggie Bullock, and Vince Carter, just to name a few, that have gone to North Carolina. But has there any, been any players that have been really helpful in your development? Um, let's see. I mean, no, honestly, not really. I don't I don't talk to that many players. I'm, I'm, very, I'm certainly very cool with some. Obviously, like Mo Bomb was one of my best friends. Um, and I'm very cool with a number of players. But in terms of just helping my development, probably not. Just wasn't reaching out to a lot of those for that those specific reasons. I mean, I've talked with Kemba, uh, Dane a little, a little bit, just just asking some questions just about the game. But in terms of like really like helping, not, nothing really hands on. Perfect. Best of luck with the draft. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next question goes to Tom Hall. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, hi, Cole. I uh, was just wondering how you think you'll get on from moving from being one of the big big guys on college to fitting into a role in the NBA. What are your ambitions for your first season? Um, let's see. I mean, shoot, just um, I think it's obviously it's gonna be different. I mean, you, you go from being that that big the, the the pretty much a celebrity on campus to being just another guy in the NBA. So I mean, just gotta work, put your head down, work, and just try to get better every single day, and just try to do what you can for your team. And then shoot, and when I where did I see myself for that that for what that first the second contract? What was that the question? Yeah. So while well, through your first season, what you think is realistic for you? Um, I think realistically, I think by that time, I can be earning a max, a max contract. Thanks. The next uh, question will be Mario Gamboa. Go ahead, Mario. Hello, Cole. Mario Gamboa here from Grupo Leal in Mexico. First of all, thanks for your time today. Of course. Um, do you feel that all this time without playing competitive basketball has affected you in any way towards the start of the NBA season? Oh, shoot. It's got me super excited that the season has started so soon. That's probably the main thing. Haven't really been able to participate in any like real runs in a while. So I'm just, it's got me super pumped and super excited and ready to get the season going. Thanks, Cole. Yep. Uh, let's go next to CL Brown. Go ahead, CL. Can you hear me, Cole? Uh, I was wondering if you got a chance to uh, run with any of the new guys in Chapel Hill, uh, like Caleb Love or RJ Davis. Shoot, I haven't got the chance to yet, unfortunately. I, I, I was fortunately able to go visit a few times, but they weren't – no, not everyone was, like, healthy. I mean, they weren't running just because due to uh, COVID restrictions. But um, I, I'm – hopefully I want to get down there sometime soon because I'd love to go teach those young guys a, a few things. And uh, there seemed to have been a, a narrative. I know when the draft starts, <clears throat> a lot of times uh, they're digging – you know, people might float out negative stuff just to see, uh, just to scare other teams off or what have you. But there seemed to have been a narrative that you were somehow a bad teammate last year in, in Chapel Hill. And I was wondering what kind of, uh, what kind of 
Have you gotten many questions about that in the interviews that you've done with teams? Yeah, I've almost gotten a question about that every single interview. So, I mean, but I just, it's, 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 it's very much false. I mean, but if you want to go, if you base it off my play, basis that I made a lot of bad decisions, yeah, you could go, you might think I'm a bad teammate, but just, I, 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 I respect your opinion, but I just <clears throat> have to respectfully say it's wrong. It's, it's incorrect. I just, I was a super supportive guy. I want to see all my teammates succeed as much as I want to see myself succeed, if not more. So, I mean, just, I don't, I don't know where the narrative comes from, but shoot, it is what it is. All right, thanks. I will do two more questions. Let's go to Callie Kaplan. Hey, Cole, sorry for the delay here. I appreciate your time. I cover the Mavericks for the Dallas Morning News, and I'm curious if you've had any contact um, with anybody in the Mavericks front office via Zoom or otherwise. Oh, uh, no, I've had no contact with anyone in Dallas Mavericks. Gotcha. Thanks, anyway. Yep. And our final question will go to Ryland Stiles. Go ahead, Ryland. Hey, Cole, I was wondering if you had any contact with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, yes, I have a Zoom call set up with them, actually, I believe, potentially Sunday. So, going to be talking to them very soon. And how would you see yourself fitting in in Oklahoma City? Um, I just see myself as another guard come in, just be a very good passer, be a, can obviously can make shots, and then just be a leader, just where anywhere I think I, I could help lead, but – just, I think I can definitely step in and try to do that there. Thank you, Cole. Yep. Thank you, everybody. This ends the uh, portion of the media interview section for this. So thank you very much for joining. Appreciate it.